Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and here let's check out the top new games made with Unity launch in February 24. It's been two months since I did one of these videos, that's because I was hard at work on my massive C-Sharp course. If you want to learn C-Sharp then check it out, there's a free video with the beginner section over here on YouTube, and there's a premium version with a ton of awesome bonuses. Coming back to making this type of video was really awesome, it's great for me to spend some time looking at the Steam new releases and seeing just how many awesome games are coming out every single month, makes me wonder how many games I missed in the past two months. The reason why I make these videos is to show you everything the engine can do. The only limit is really just your own skills and imagination, and the variety and the awesomeness of the game shown here really puts that to the test. All of these games are uniquely impressive, so the list is in no particular order, except for the number one game that is my personal pick of the month. And if you need anything to build your own games, there's two excellent humble bundles out right now. There's one all about synthy assets, so if you're a fan of their low poly style, you can build tons of games with these. And another really interesting one that just started with a ton of really interesting tools. There's one for some really gorgeous stylized lighting, one for drawing pixel art directly inside Unity, there's a grid system directly on a sphere, a quest system, a really great liquid volume shader, and tons more stuff. All of it with super deep 97% discounts. Check it all out with the links in the description. Alright, so starting off at number 10, here's a highly anticipated indie sequel, Sons of the Forest. This is an open world survival horror crafting game in both single player and multiplayer. You come to this remote island and start gathering some resources to build your home, but you're not alone. There are cannonballs that very much would like to eat you, so you must craft some weapons to defend yourself, first just a bow, then a taser, and finally some firearms. And beyond the cannonballs, there are also some really terrifying demons. It's quite spooky at night. The game also has a season system, meaning depending on the season, you can get some fresh salmon or store some meat for the winter. Visually the game looks really great, it's got some very high quality assets and lighting, I assume it means they're using AGRP. The original game has almost half a million reviews that's insanely successful, and this one also seems to be doing very well. In just one month it has acquired 150,000 very positive reviews. Indie sequels are always really tricky and many times they fail, but it seems like this one is doing really great. Then here's a game with a very descriptive name, it's called Supermarket Simulator. These simulator games are usually a bit hit or miss, this one is very much a hit and people do seem to love it. The goal is quite simple, you build and manage a supermarket. So you buy some basic items, then you use those items to stock shelves, define their price, and go man the cash register. Let the customers come in and scan their items one by one, then make sure you also give them the correct change. So it all starts off very manual, and as you upgrade your supermarket you get more and more space to stock your shelves, then you need to start doing some more serious inventory management and hire some people to help you out. So it features the usual start super small and grow really big. It is out now in early access, and like I said the response has been really great, with already over 6,000 very positive reviews. Next here's an action RPG titled Last Epoch. Right away my first impression is really to be impressed with the production value on this one. If you told me this was Diablo, which had a budget in the many millions of dollars, I would have believed it, it looks really great. You've got 15 classes that you can use, everything where you can fight from distance with a mage, or you can go up close and personal with the Beastmaster, or just go super sneaky and stealthy with some kind of rogue. There are lots of classes to experiment, and hundreds of skills across multiple skill trees, it really has a ton of content, and of course being a Diablo-like means there's tons of enemies and tons of loot, as well as endless replayability thanks to a ton of randomization. So if you enjoy it, then this is really one of those games where you can play forever. It is out now and it's gotten a ton of reviews with over 70,000, although they're only mostly positive, which apparently comes mainly from some problems with connections. Then if you're looking for some turn-based strategy, check out Moonbreaker. This one is a miniatures game, it's got a really great visual style. Strangely enough, this is actually by the same developer that made Subnautica, so this is quite a departure from that game. And also something that I also didn't know is that these devs also made the excellent Natural Selection too, so they are definitely a very skilled studio. So in this game you've got all kinds of characters, you can build up your roster to mix and match with all the skills that you need, you fight in turn-based battles against all kinds of creatures while you explore this vast world and listen to some lore spoken by some really excellent voice actors. And since this is all about figurines, it even includes a mode where you can paint on your own figurines, so you can really make all these characters really your own. And despite being figurines, the combat looks really excellent with tons of effects and some very expressive animations, even though the characters themselves are all fixed in place, so that combined with the fact that its miniatures or figurines makes it a really great visual style, it really looks great. It is out now with a thousand very positive reviews. Then if you'd like to run your own news company, check out News Tower. It's set in New York in the 1930s. Your goal is to make the best newspaper ever, but doing that is not going to be easy. It's up to you to decide what stories to cover and which to put on the front page. However, various factions, like the mafia and the government, they would like you to print their own truth. So the question is, will you bend to their will or will you keep your integrity? The choice is yours. You manage your reporters and send them out to find stories. Different reporters have different interests, which make them more or less suitable for some stories. But even when you have those stories ready, you still need to print them, so you also need to build your own printing press to put those words into paper. It's already a pretty complex game and they have a very detailed roadmap. It is out now in early access 
Texas with an extremely impressive 500 reviews at 97% positive. That's really insane. That puts it in the top 1% of games on Steam. Then for some VR, if you'd like to play a massive RPG, here is Legendary Tales. This one looks like a really well made vast RPG with tons of content in a huge world in both single player and multiplayer. This one has apparently been getting constant updates in early access for over four years now. So that explains why it looks so massive. You've got all kinds of play styles, so you can go stealthy with a dagger, or you can hit enemies from afar with a bow, or get up close and personal with a huge morning star. There's lots of weapons with randomly generated stats, so you can always find something new, or simply dispatch your enemies with your combat or magic skills. There's also crafting, which allows you to craft your own weapons or potions to help you on your journey. The whole game works in either single player or four player co-op. It is fully released right now after graduating from early access, and already has over 2,000 very positive reviews. Next up here is a very unique dice-based creature game titled Dice Folk. You wield magic dice and you build a team of powerful chimeras on this roguelite adventure. One really strange, really unique twist is how you can actually control both sides of the battle, so you have some control over the enemies themselves. That certainly makes for a quite unique mechanic. You gather and control all of these creatures, these chimeras, of which there are hundreds of unique ones, each with their own stats and abilities. This is a roguelite, so each playthrough is going to be unique. The amount of chimera combinations in the random world makes this endlessly replayable. It's only been a few days since it's out and the response is already pretty great, over 250 very positive reviews. Next, for some fun management, here is Rail Route. You design, operate, upgrade, and automate a rail network. This one definitely appeals to me. It's very systems driven with some minimalistic visuals. You start off simple with just a single train on a single track, then take on more contracts and build your rail network. You add more trains and more tracks while making sure everything works correctly. Use automation to make it all run flawlessly. So it's one of those games that starts off really simple and then becomes really complex. If you do it right, then you'll be able to enjoy your rail route working automatically with perfect smooth flow which makes it really satisfying. This one has just graduated out of early access. It is out now with over 1400 very positive reviews. Then if you're into the colors black and red, here is Solium Infernum. It's a grand strategy game. Your goal is to take the infernal throne. So it's a game of politics, intrigue and betrayal, all of it set in hell. You command legions of minions, you can enlist champions, cast arc rituals and take out your foes. Choose from one of eight playable arc fiends and take them to explore this world with some gorgeous dark art. In terms of capturing the style of hell, this game has certainly done exactly that. Everything looks really dark and moody in a really awesome way. You can play either solo or with up to six people, either in just one session or asynchronously. It is out now with over 600 very positive reviews. Then at number one for my personal pick of the month, here we have a great looking vampire survival like titled Deep Rock Galactic Survival. This one is a spin-off of the very popular game. However, this is not just a bare bones copy of vampire survivors with different skin. Instead, this game seems to have some actually unique ideas on top of that similar core. This is really awesome to see. There are tons of vampire survivors clones, but very few of them actually try to push that little subgenre forward. You can mine and explore this world with 100% destructible terrain. Just that feature, just the fact alone that you can dig your own tunnels, that adds a really interesting layer of strategy to this genre. Naturally, you have all kinds of skills and weapons. You skill up as you mine some more and destroy enemies, along with different classes of doors that you can choose, and tons and tons of weapons and projectiles flying all over the place. If you're a fan of the style of the original, and you also enjoy Vampire Survivors, then this looks absolutely excellent. It is out now in early access and already seems pretty solid. It's got got 15,000 very positive views, so people are really enjoying it. Alright, so that's 10 awesome new games made with Unity launched in February 24. I hope this list helped you see how the Unity engine is capable of building anything. The only limits are really just your own skills and imagination. Check out my own game, Dinky Gardens, and I hope you enjoy playing it.